Did you know the majority of chainsaw accidents are on the extremities? Cuts on arms, cuts on legs. Did you know you have this thing called a femoral artery that runs on the inside of your thigh that if it gets damaged, you have only seconds to live? Well, I'm aware of this. Working as a medic with the fire department, I have seen things like this and they are horrific. Chainsaw accidents are some of the worst things uh, that you could possibly endure. They don't cut, they tear flesh. And if you do get involved in something like that, uh, you need to have medical attention immediately. The problem that we run into, those of us who cut firewood and such, you know, many of us work by ourselves. And we work out in the middle of nowhere and it could be hours before even anyone even knew that something was wrong. So, one thing that I learned, one good thing that I got out of the uh, Sawyer class with the USFS was putting together a small personal first aid kit that's very specific to the chainsaw worker or the sawyer. And that's what I have right here that I'm going to share with you. What you see here, this is my Wildland Web Gear. And this is a great little uh, kit. It's very minimalistic. It's designed specifically for major traumas of extremities. And this little kit can make the difference between life or death. I really believe it. So what do I have here? Let's take it off here. So what this is, is this is just a small 5.11 kit that's perfect that's purpose-built for this type of application. Mainly kind of geared towards military, maybe for treating gunshot wounds or different things. So what I've got here is I'll just unclick the smolly, or the snaps on the molly, and it's got these two straps here, and I can simply pull them up, both of them, and that releases the kit. Very quick, very efficient. That way I could get it off and take it to the wound, whether I'm treating myself or, or someone else. You can see here just the classic, traditional molly configuration on the back. You've got all these different webbing, so you can weave it to fit whatever you have. You can make it ride high, you can make it ride low, you can put it on a belt. Great, great little kit. The 511 stuff, I'm just really impressed with. It's always, everything I've had from them is, is just really nice, built nice. It's got the cross on there for first aid, little details like that. But what's in this thing are two major things. Uh, first is the cat tourniquet. Many of you are going to be familiar with these, especially if you're in the military. This was kind of designed for, or maybe came out of all of the wars that we've been in. It's a tourniquet that can be applied to an arm or a leg but with one hand. For example, let's say you get shot or you get hurt in the arm and one arm is broken and immovable and you're bleeding to death. You can apply this and tighten it up with this plastic handle using only one hand. The timestamp on there is to write when you put it on there. So when you do receive medical care, they'll know how long that tourniquet has been on and it will help them in, in treating you. But that is designed to fit in this pouch on the outside. On the outside, because you, you can access it and apply it without digging into a kit. You don't want to take your line gear or your backpack off if you really are, are in, a, in, a, in a state or in a desperate De desperate state of injury, uh, you want to be able to get to it fast, and that is the idea behind it. So again, this is very minimalistic. This is very tailored, very specific for major traumas. So there's not a lot of stuff in here. This is not a for boo-boos and band-aids and aspirins and such. This is life or death here. So inside, I have a four-inch hemorrhage control bandage, other words known as a, an Israeli bandage. These are basic, this is a form of tourniquet as well. It's got, it's a compression bandage that has a dressing that will hold and put pressure on the wound. And they're hermetically sealed in here and careful, they do have expiration dates. So if you're buying one, um, you just know that. Also, I'm gonna have a, a pair of very small trauma shears. These are the little, the little baby ones. Yeah, that's nice, they don't weigh very much. You might say, well, you know, I'll just use my pocket knife. Yeah. Trust me. Having some scissors or shears is better when you're really stressed out, especially if you're working on yourself. And of course, a pair of gloves, if I need to put this or use this on someone that I do not know. So gloves don't take up much room. And they have lots of different, re or lots of different uh, ways you can use them. So, so that is it. So this kit is just great for so many ways. So I can quickly take it off my line gear. Let's say, for example, I'm not using my line gear. It's not fire season, maybe it's wood cutting season. So, I've got my follower's belt. What do I have on here? I've got my squincher there and my wedges and my axe and stuff. I can, I can weave this on here and just open it up to fit whatever size belt that I have. 
and I can wear this on my belt. And it's not, it's small enough, it's not going to be in my way. Resist the temptation to fill this thing up and pack it with a bunch of stuff because you, I could put more in there, but then it just gets poofier and poofier and sticks out. It already sticks out a fair amount with that cat tourniquet on there. So just, you know, your, your mileage is going to vary, of course, but uh, just be careful and don't, don't overfill it. You know, this is not the purpose for it. I've got my larger kit here. You can see which I'll keep in my wildland bag here. That's going to have my my more of my first aid stuff in there. I'm going to have my aspirin in there. I'm going to have my um, my band aids and my mole skin and triangle bandages and all of the things to treat. You know, just just to make your life more comfortable, uh, but are not necessarily life threatening. There are blood sponges, compression sponges in here, and of course I keep quick clot and such in here. Uh, but you can see it, it's a different kit. So, you know, this also is a very nice bag. I, both of these, uh, I'll put, I'll go, uh, go to my Amazon store at wranglermart.com. If you want to see these things, I'll put a first aid section on there. I think this kit was like 14 or $17 just for the bag, the red one. It's really great. It's Voodoo Tactical. You can weave that on as well. A great, really tough, robust kit with a self-healing zipper on it. Very impressed. R really cheap. And this one, of course, is 511. But I'll put all these things in a little first aid kit uh, section. Um, but if you are a woodcutter or a sawyer, this is something that you really want to look into. You do, maybe you don't have to have that type of tourniquet, but have a tourniquet and a big Israeli bandage. It's actually being required by the U.S. Forest Service for anyone running a chainsaw. Any certified faller needs to have a little kit like this with an Israeli bandage at least. They're not specking out a cat tourniquet. That's a little bit of icing on the cake there, uh, but it wouldn't surprise me if they do so soon. It just makes sense. Just makes sense. So, yeah. What else was I going to... Oh, so, yeah. So I used to carry around... The last thing I'll finish up here. Uh, I put together this great big kit... It's not great big, but it's, it's pretty big. And the idea was, the reason why it's so poofy is that there's a lot of blood sponges and, and compression dressings in there for chainsaw type of injuries. And yes, it's a good idea. However, this is a nice kit. However, uh, I, I, what I find is I leave it in the truck. And I can be working a long ways from the truck. And if seconds matter... Uh, getting to this would be a problem. So, having the small 511 kit, the little tourniquet and the Israeli bandage, is going to be on my person all the time. And I can move it around and, and apply it to whatever job I'm doing. I could, again, I could, you could even do that. It gets a little bit bulky, but you could do it. So, that's it. I wanted to share that with you and just a little food for thought. Um, if you are a cutter, make the investment. And it, and it is really bandage at least. You know, it's the best $15, $20 you'll ever spend. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm a fan of it. So that's it. We'll see you guys. Oh, wait a minute. What was I going to say? I had something else I wanted to say. Oh, uh, I, if you haven't noticed, I haven't started any big projects. I wanted to touch on this for a minute because there is so much going on. I'm, I'm just finishing up with all my wildland training. I've been spending a lot of time with the fire department. You know, we're just gearing up, trying to get up to speed for what could be a devastating wildland season. And we've been traveling a lot. We just got back from Seattle and we got to head back up there again and we're a lot busier than we would like to be, but it's just, it just so happened that all these things kind of came upon us at once. So I will be starting um, more traditional projects and different things that, um, that you guys enjoy watching um, as soon as I get back. But uh, my life, our life has been really hectic and really fast and we're going to make, make a real effort to slow it down and get back to the way things were. So I appreciate your patience, and that's why the videos have been a little bit varied and on different topics. There were things that I could do without really starting a big project and, and getting thing over involved. So thank you, thank you for that. So click, take a moment and click the thumbs up if you enjoy these videos. It's a way you can support my channel, and I really appreciate it. I know Mrs. W does as well. And if you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button. Yeah. And then you can follow us along and it's going to be a great busy summer and a lot of new interesting things coming up. So that's all I can tell you for now. But we'll see you guys on the next video.
We just got flanked. We're pulling our hoses, we gotta head out. We have lost the canyon, we're pulling out. On the other side, and uh, we're getting reinforced disc line here That's now. We're gonna see how well it holds up, it's about dry. So uh, out of here. at that point, we might be able to bump a couple of engines your way. Trying to get a better vantage point right now. Firewalls going up, but a hasty retreat. 